Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be talking about my favorite book series. I'm going to be talking about completed ones and ones that are like ongoing. I love getting lost in a series and just being in a world for like a long amount of time where you could just like fully become obsessed with it. Without further ado, let's get into it. We're going to start off with one of my favorite series, The Cruel Prince. There are three books in the series. This is a Y fantasy with a whimsical fairy world with Faye. A human named Jude goes into this fairy world. She was taken there when she was little. She ends up having to grow really tough skin in order to survive. She's one of my all-time favorite characters and so is the guy in this, Cardin. His main personality trait, I do have to say, is drinking Faye wine all the time as opposed to Jude who just skips to drinking straight up poison. It is an to lovers but it's mostly like a fantasy like political fantasy with a lot of political plot lines in it and action fighting and scheming plot lines however the romance is kind of intertwined with all those so it's very much enemies to lovers it's like a roller coaster like it's not just like a straight line enemies to lovers it's like ups and downs but it's one of the most coolest most like intense love stories i've read there's just like endless amounts of tension in this book and it makes it feel like even though the romance is just a subplot, it makes it feel like it's like a bigger part of it. They're like affecting each other in so many different ways throughout the book. This is one of my favorite worlds to escape into. I've read this one multiple times because I just like getting brought back into it and I like all three of the book. The Addicted Callaway Sister series, it's like a romance. I can't even really say it's a romance because the first book for sure does not feel like a romance at all because it talks a lot about addiction it's like found family there's a found family and it's like a friend group at the core of it where they're all just like super close and they go through a lot of crazy things together the main girl in this book she struggles with a sex addiction and then the guy in it struggles with an alcohol addiction so they're both like enabling each other in the beginning it just kind of goes from there and it's very like painful a painful read for like most of the first book there are a lot of moments just throughout it that are kind of painful but it gets better and better as you just like kind of see the characters grow they just grow a lot throughout the series and it's one where i got super emotionally attached to it like i would think about it a lot and i would feel so much for the characters. The thing that's confusing about these books is that there's also, this is like the Addicted series, but there's also like a Callaway Sisters series. I think how it works is it's like these go and then it's like in between the other, like the Callaway Sister books, like fit in between some of these. I would definitely recommend if you're going to read these books to look up the order because it can get very confusing. I definitely read some of them in the wrong order and I just re like basically reread the same sort of stuff out of order because i wanted to read it anyway i really did love the books as they went on the first one i really did struggle with because of like all the things that i said it's like just a really hard book to read but it's definitely i feel like it's worth checking out to see if you like it or not it is something to where i would look up the trigger warnings next series i'm going to recommend is caraval or caraval so this is a completed three book series and it's so good. I was locked up in my room for days when I read this. When I was reading this series, I truly felt like I was in another world. This is the world that I'd want to be in or like one of them that I'd really want to be in if I was in a fantasy world. The type of magic in this world is different than like a lot of the other fantasy books that I've read. It's more like a magician type of magic. This is a YA fantasy and romance is definitely at the center of these books, but there's also like a very interesting main plot as well the main girl in the first book because the character main character actually changes it starts off with two sisters and one of the sisters is the main character in this book it kind of switches to the second sister in the second book and then it's the second sister throughout the rest of them yeah the sister has been writing to the master of the carnival she's been writing to him asking if she could bring if he could bring his show over to where she is because it's like a traveling circus there's a week-long game and it's like this place where magic feels like it actually exists she heard about this growing up and so she really wants to go and she wants to get away from her dad because he's abusive so they go on this adventure they end up playing the game and the concept of reality and what's real and what's not real it all gets really mixed up while they're playing this game one of the lines that's like kind of uh, iconic from this is remember it's all a game what happens beyond this gate may frighten or excite you but don't let any of it trick you i feel like it's just so genius like the concept of it and like 
I don't know, like it feels so cool to read. Next up, The Prison Healer. This is about a girl who her parents were doing something illegal. They were a part of a rebellion, so she was sent with her dad when she was really young to this prison. Her dad ended up dying, so now she's like alone in the prison, and whenever people come in, she heals them, like cleans their wounds and stitches them up and everything. So she's been there for years and years, and then one day, this guy comes in. They end up becoming friends, and then another person comes in who's like the rebel queen. The rebel queen is like unconscious, like she's like not okay. They challenge her to sing where it's either like death, or you survive the trial but kiva the main girl in this who's a prison healer she's like she's unconscious she can't do it and she volunteers for as tribute so now she has to compete in these trials where she could very well die and it's pretty intense really good the second one is called the gilded cage and then the third one is called the blood trader okay this next series i'm kind of just saying because I, it's like introducing the one after it because this is the shadow and bone trilogy i don't have the second book i just like couldn't find it anywhere when I was reading it. I really liked these books a lot. There's like this darkness that's overtaking the lands and they're looking for someone who has like this light power that kind of combats the darkness. She ends up randomly showing that she has this light power that she's hidden away this entire time. But when she's in a moment of need, it comes out. Romance, action, magic, all that stuff. Next, you have the Six of Crows duology. I like them both. I like that trilogy and I like this duology a lot. This one is on like a different level for me personally because it just completely got me back into reading again. This is like the one that I read where I was like, oh my god, that was so good. It's a YA fantasy. It has like a heist or like multiple heists in it. A found family group that I love so, so much. They're all like such complex characters. It's rare that I read a YA fantasy book that does like the characters justice as much as this one does. I felt like I got to know and love all of them so much and it just made everything that happened, all the relationships between each of them, all like the little jokes and the moments in their life, like so much more meaningful and impactful. They're funny and like fun to read about and it, there's just like always something interesting happening. I just, oh, I love these books so much. I could not recommend it more. Another thing I love is that the second one is just as good as the first one. Next, The Inheritance Game. So technically, I don't really know if this is finished. I feel like these books are finished but then like the Hawthorne brothers came out recently. I think this last one was an ending of some sort. This is about a high school girl named Avery who doesn't have a lot of money but then she randomly gets called to the principal's office one day told that she's inheriting 46.2 billion dollars from this guy named Tobias Hawthorne and he's yeah he's dead now but she got his all of his money and his house. The only condition is that she has to stay in it for a year and only be able to leave for like three days at a time and stay with his grandson's living there and like some other family which you can imagine how awkward that is that all this money went to this random girl and no one knows why and they're all like suspecting things of her there's a lot of mystery and fun games it's super fast paced with short chapters and there's a good old love triangle in there too another series by jennifer lynn barnes that i love is the naturals i've read the first two books but i have not read this one yet and i think there are like one or two more after it this is about a group of kids who are like solving crimes or solving cold cases they start to actually get wrapped up in the real crimes it's from the perspective of a girl named cassie also a love triangle in this it's just a little bit more like um murder mystery sort of thing both of them seem like mid to higher ya to where like i feel like any age group could really enjoy them these ones are a bit more gruesome though and they feel like a little bit less YA in a way. The Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This is about a girl named Pip who opens up this old like cold case for her high school project and she starts making a podcast about it. She ends up finding out a lot about the situation that they didn't know before. She starts working with the guy who's accused of murdering someone all those years ago. She starts working with his little brother because he also wants to figure out what happened. And there's a romance that sparks up that I love so, so much. This is also getting made into a show. I think it's a show. So if you want to read these books, I think now's a great time to do it. It's so fun. And the audiobook is really good too. If you want to like be doing stuff around the house while you're reading it or listening to it. I do like to have the books for the reason of just writing down like guesses of what's going to happen or maybe like circling clues. I feel like it's probably one of the most interactive books that I have in the way of just like, I feel like it's so fun to be able to guess 
alongside the characters and I don't think it's predictable now for the shatter me series there are way more books than this by the way I just got like a pack that had these four in it and then I just read these four and I absolutely love them but then I stopped reading like I didn't get any more of the books because I was like okay I've been reading these like too much like I was in the world for a long enough time to where I was like okay I need to get out of it but I loved being in it and I loved the experience and it was very like addictive writing I'd say here are my thoughts like going through the books because I just feel I need to do that on this one shatter me book one not that good this one just felt like it was lacking a little bit but it showed promise for being like a fun read also I liked the romance but at the same time I knew what where it was going and i didn't know how they were going to do that this one was like it's getting better like i was like okay i see promise i'm definitely reading the next one it was like going up on the roller coaster you know i was like okay we are really getting somewhere it's getting really interesting especially in the later parts of it if i'm remembering correctly there are just like some really good scenes in here but the third one ignite me this one is where it got amazing and i was like okay i'm obsessed with this like this one had so many scenes that i loved i just loved the entire story the romance was really the best part of this book but also i feel like the plot just got better and better the character development for juliet just got so much better like she's just she grew so much throughout even just the four books that i read it was so cool to read the fourth one so good very action-packed if i'm remembering correctly it has been like some years since i read these but i did love this one i remember i really liked it definitely worth the read in my opinion the clockwork angel series oh i love these books so much this is a great time like the fall time is a great time to read these books because it gave me okay i don't think anyone has ever agreed with me on this and like that's okay you know it's just like for me personally it gave me a little bit of like when harry potter gets darker you know when they get older it takes place in olden days gloomy london but like in the underground scene of like demons and demon hunters just like scary magic vampires all that sort of stuff i loved these books so much if i have a favorite type of character like one of my favorite types of characters are sarcastic characters who have like a hard shell outside but are just like mushy in the inside that is will in clockwork angel first one amazing second one amazing third one amazing clockwork angel clockwork prince and then clockwork princess there are three main characters which are tessa will and jem all of them are amazing and i love them all will and jem are super close they're best friends they love each other so much like you could feel the love when you're reading it and then tessa just comes in she is like becomes a part of it and they all become so close such good friends and there's also a love triangle i don't have that many unfinished series that i want to talk about today but i do have a couple so let me just start off with my favorite once upon a broken heart and the ballad of never after these and the next book that's coming out they're a spin-off of caraval this spin-off follows a love interest that's the second sister is one of the second sisters love interest Jax, and he's the prince of hearts he is one of my favorite characters ever i love him so much he's also has that like sarcastic vibe like how um in the clockwork angel like how will was Jax kind of has that like sarcastic has been wounded so like tries to have this like hard shell around him evangeline is of course the sunshine to his grumpy and they're so cute evangeline makes a deal with the prince of hearts because she just got her heart broken she strikes a deal with the charismatic but wicked prince of hearts in exchange for his help he asks for three kisses to be given at the time and place of his choosing so that's sort of what Jax does is he like makes deals with people but you can't really trust the immortals like Jax because they're very tricky and they're not always like the best people but that's what makes it so much more interesting like the romance that strikes up between them two and it's one of my favorite romance stories in a fantasy book ever the world that it takes place in has a lot of like whimsical magic and pretty ball gowns and just like snow and stuff like that it's just it's very like pretty and beautiful sounding and it's also like wicked magic type of thing it has a little bit more like flair than caraval world did caraval world was more like magic magician type of vibe with like real magic in it this one has more of a outward fantasy feeling next up fourth wing i've only read the first book to this the second one's going to come out next month though in november in this book there are like dragon riders but it's really hard to like become a dragon rider because you have to go through all these really dangerous things like kind of how in divergent what she had to do to like be the um whatever that 
fighting one is. You have to do a bunch of really, really dangerous stuff. And then even after all that dangerous stuff where like a bunch of people end up dying, you have to be good enough for like a dragon to choose you and like for you to be worthy of a dragon. She doesn't want to do this, but she's kind of forced into it by her mom who's like this war general or like someone who's like in charge with all that stuff. She has a lot of enemies because of this war that happened. Some of like the kids of the enemies who got killed are like still around. So when Violet joins, she's like, oh great. People already hate me because my mom and one guy specifically hates her. She almost dies a bunch of times and it's a enemies to lovers romance, dramatic, intense fantasy romance sort of vibe. I also love any books with dragons in it. Dragons are just so fun. And I love how the dragon like talks to her inside of her head. Like they talk to each other. That's just so cool. Next up, Legendborn. This one, I think it might end up being a trilogy. I'd have to double check that, but I just know that it's continuing and there are two books out right now. This fantasy is pretty different from all the other ones that I've talked about so far. It's a YA fantasy. It's kind of centered around like the magic system. It's centered around two different magic sources. One is like King Arthur in the round table. All the descendants of King Arthur are like, all of the people from the round table like the magic passes down with whoever is chosen to take that spot at the round table brie starts going to this school and she quickly finds out that there are a lot of secrets at the school there's a secret society where they capture demons or like kill demons and she sees it happen and then something's different with her because she can't her memory like can't really fully be erased she ends up kind of becoming in on it with them she ends up discovering a lot more about herself and the magic that she holds within i can feel like i could say that because she's literally like wielding magic on the front cover so it doesn't feel like a spoiler there is a love triangle in this but it's not like the main plot in it it's definitely like a subplot i'd say it's like a pretty strong subplot there is a bit of found family i feel like it starts giving the feel of found family even more like in the second book i have a feeling that the next book is going to be even better than the second book which the second book i actually liked more than the first one and the first one i already liked all right now the last one that i'm going to talk about is the stolen air this is a spin-off series of the cruel prince they look really similar it reminds me a lot of the cruel prince it is a lot different it just has like the romance in it for example a little bit reminds me of like that intense enemies to lovers but it starts off and they're like friends ish where in the cruel prince they start off and they're enemies so that is a bit of a change in the dynamic between the main two characters it is about the little brother from the cruel prince jude's little brother a runaway queen a reluctant prince and a quest that may destroy them both so the runaway queen it was another one of those like really sad origin stories where she got taken away from her family the prince however oak needs her they were like friends when they were younger and so they kind of already know each other she's very distrustful of him at first and she doesn't know like how he's changed when he's gotten older but he needs her for this quest that he's going to go on i'm super excited to where it goes i did not want it to end like when it got to the end i was like i need the second book immediately so just be prepared to feel like that when you finish this one that is the end of this video thank you so much for watching make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos i'm gonna link all my social medias in the description where i talk about books on those two and i'll see you in the next one